So here we have a uh, Dell Optiplex 5070, as you can see right there, right there. And uh, this is a brand new model. Uh, this is running the latest uh, Intel Core i5, uh, six cores. Um, you can see uh, which ports it has here. It's not very exciting. USB 3, uh, USB 3 type C, USB 2, uh, and a USB 2 with power. Um, uh, in this case, I opted for unit without uh, DVD because who cares anymore. I also opted in for the third DisplayPort uh, connection because that's what Dell sells for monitors mostly these days, and I don't want to goof around with the analogs. Uh, other than that, everything's pretty normal. Let's pull it apart and I'll show you something interesting before we benchmark this. Uh, so let's pop this down, pop the side off. And here we go, and that is the inside of the unit, uh, which you can't really see much, so let's pull it apart a bit more, and we'll show you. To uh, to pull this unit out, the uh, the old hard drive bays out, you need to pop this open, pop these three clips up, which is pretty easy, well, except for that one, there we go, and then slide this over, and then lift it up. And now you can see what's in here, and you can see I don't have any hard drives in here. All of the hard drives uh, nowadays, uh, if you're doing this, well, I would say properly, but some people would argue with me, are um, M.2 discs, much like this one. Now this is the M.2 disc that shipped with this unit. This is a, a 256 gig, uh, they call it a, a class 35. Uh, it is an NVMe disc, even though it has the B uh, and M uh, keys on them, uh, but it is NVMe, PCI Express, for those of you who know what that is, uh, which is radically faster than SATA. Um, and it fit right here. Uh, what I did was I uh, took the little screw out of the back here, popped it out, lifted this out, and um, uh, tossed it because the speed on this is not very good. I'm going to show you what that means in a benchmark shortly. So this isn't garbage, but it's not far off um, for me. Uh, also, given the price, it didn't make a lot of sense. This is um, not an inexpensive little drive. Uh, I'll just sell these on eBay or Kijiji or somewhere else and get rid of them uh, for the load that I'm load of these that I'm about to order. And what I've done is I ordered a replacement disc from Amazon for about 120, 130 bucks called a Crucial P1. Um, I'm, you can uh, do the research on this yourself, but what it boils down to is there is an issue with the P1 in that it uses um, a new uh, storage technology that uh, instead of putting well. Originally SSDs put one byte of data into a single cell, then they figured out how to double that, and they figured out how to triple it, and now this is these are quads. So this is able to handle four bits of data for each cell. And uh, if you check the benchmarks, you'll find that there um, that there is a real issue with this when it gets full. So um, when it gets too full, it slows down. Uh, however, the logic on it on uh, buying that this particular disk is as follows. This is a quarter terabyte. This is a terabyte. This from Dell was probably 150 bucks. This from Amazon, four times the size, is about 120 bucks. So yeah, that's what I'm going with. Uh, also, its lifespan is a little bit shorter. Um, it's uh, 200 terabyte, which if you work that out, I believe it works out to you're moving 200 gig of data of writes per day seven days a week for five and a half years. In other words, this is a 30 year disc. Uh, you shouldn't, um, yeah, I, I can't imagine somebody actually burning this out, but it is possible. So if you're an extremely heavy, large file transfer, uh, then you're not gonna wanna use this disc. If you are a standard user, even a power user, this is way more than enough. And it really only slows down and really, um, the only real issue with it is when you're over According to the videos I've been watching, the benchmarks I've been watching, over about 95% full. So when I say full, I mean full. At 90%, there's virtually no slowdown. Um, and you can watch other people's videos to explain why, but this is an excellent disc. So let's put that aside. So what's in here? We've got uh, our memory sticks. We have old school SATA ports. Uh, they gave us cables, which, you know, great. Uh, and they've given us a little power cable. Dell's given us a little power cable for the, uh, and, uh, for a, uh, DVD drive that I'm not going to install. Uh, power supply pops out just like usual. See a little blue tab down there, so you just pop that. And um, uh, after you unscrew the uh, three screws at the back here, unscrew that, uh, un take the three screws out, pop that, and out it goes. 
This is a screwless chassis again, so I can simply pop this up and pop these uh, knockouts out um, if I want to. The, uh, there's the CPU fan underneath there. This comes with two slots. Uh, this is the, um, they're both PCI Express, uh, the larger and the smaller one, right, for the uh, more, uh, uh, more channels in the bus. And uh, what else can I show you? I don't think there's very much. It's, these are pretty simple machines these days, right? We're down to um, single north bridge. Um, there's no south bridges anymore. Um, motherboard, yeah. Uh, Add-on adapters here. I don't know what that one's for specifically. Uh, it says it says card reader, so I guess that's that mystery solved. It's for a card reader. Um, and uh, there's a Type-C connector back here as well. Um, which uh, could be used for other devices, but uh, we're not going to use any of these right now because this is a brand new machine. And this is exactly the spec I want. This is driving the Intel i5 current gen, which has the, uh, what is it? The 630 Intel 630 CPU in it, or sorry, in <laughs> Intel 630 uh, video in it. Uh, and that's enough for me. Okay, so I always use NovaBench to do my testing. Uh, you can just look for novabench.com and uh, pull it down, uh, just Google it, you'll find it. And a um, simple tool, works really, really well, and I've used it now for close to a decade to benchmark older equipment. Uh, what I'm gonna do is get through this very quickly, and uh, we're just gonna advance this so you don't have to sit here and wait. But you can see that this is an i5-9500, pretty standard chip from Intel, again with the uh, UHD uh, 630 graphics and 16 gig of RAM. And uh, crucially, uh, not uh, don't use that word by accident, where you're running the crucial uh, P1 uh, one terabyte disk. Also something to note that I should have when I was explaining the P1 is that the P1 uh, 512 gig disk is drastically slower than the one terabyte disk. So it's worth the extra 30 bucks to buy the uh, one terabyte, not just for the space, but because it's way faster. You can look at other sites to explain why, but it boils down to caching. So let's keep going here, start test. It's always important to run these tests several times so that you get uh, an accurate speed. Uh, okay, so let's compare this to previous models. Uh, so what this actually shipped with was that Dell SK Hynix uh, M2 uh, NVMe drive. And as you can see here, the speed that uh, Nova, uh, Nova, came up, Nova Bench came up with after a few tests was a rating of 141. And you can see here, this one came up with 180. Uh, that's the, uh, the new unit uh, with the crucial uh, P1. Uh, but really ignore that number and look at the actual speed numbers. So uh, with the disk that, uh, that Dell shipped, uh, the write speed was, uh, so what, 760, 759? And on this, the write speed is 1598. So I'm going to call that 1600. So it's roughly twice as fast. Uh, the read speeds are both the same, uh, 1180 and what's that, 1122. So they're close enough. But the write speeds are dramatically faster. Uh, the overall benchmark score uh, comes up at 1527, whereas with the Dell, of course, the Nova Bench rates it at uh, 1484. When I say the Dell, I'm talking about the Dell SK Hynix. And looking at previous years, um, let's go back uh, all the way back here to, uh, well, the 5050s are, you know, uh, last year and the year before, and um, they're fine. Uh, but with SSDs, and I uh, was using SanDisk SSDs for those, uh, you can see the speeds are, well, let's go with, with dramatically slower. And that's because they're SATA, not PCIe uh, or N NVMe disks. Uh, and looking back at the 9020s and then even further to the 9010s, you can see, oh my God, there's a gigantic performance uh, difference between uh, the, the old system and the new. So a 9010 from, say, 2014, 2015 to uh, 5070, it's almost twice as fast. So something else to note is that we will be testing this 5070 i5 against a 5070 i7, which has eight cores. Uh, so six cores versus eight cores are really the big difference there. Uh, in a few weeks, when the when our 5070s start showing up, if you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye bye.